Additive manufacturing or metal 3D printing? What is it and what are the different types? Danny from Mark 3D is here and you're gonna tell us more, Danny. So talk to us about Mark Forge technology and how it compares to maybe some of the more powder technologies. Okay, yeah, typically if I'll just use a part to demonstrate, a lot of people think of powder bed when we talk about metal printing, which is a granulated powder with a laser, very expensive, some great properties to it, but Mark Forge really thought about and addressed some of their points that uh, cause problems to adoption. So one of those is health and safety. Basically, we take the powdered raw stock, put it in a filament form, bound with a polymer and a wax, and extrude it on a printer, very similar to the, the X7 here. We could have the metal printer printing away. Uh, we then flip to MIM, or metal injection molding, downstream post-processing of a wash and a sinter. That has some additional benefits of stress relieving and allowing us to swap materials nice and easily. I mean, that is one major point for the Metal X, being able to go from a 17.4, pH stainless steel, like this brake lever here, to a pure copper in five minutes with no calibrations. Okay, so for people watching this video, maybe they, they don't know a great deal about additive. Um, if you're using powder technology, that can take quite some time to swap from one material to another. Yeah, uh, in my former days, I used to run one cracking machine, but it would be a day, a day and a half's work, and a lot of consumables and recalibrations required. Um, as I mentioned, it's a spool on, spool off, five minute warm up time to make it a bit more malleable and away you go. Okay, and we're talking to CNC machinists predominantly today. So let's take a CNC machine shop. They might have 20 CNCs, uh, an operator on each, you know. Where, where's a metal machine, a metal 3D printer or additive machine gonna fit within that business? Well, basically complexity. If you can't machine it currently, it's gonna give you options to make new products or products better, shall we say. For example, um, this element here, it's basically off um, a glorified th fence post thumper. It's a pneumatic element. It used to be one casting, a seal, nuts and bolts, and a laser cut plate. Now it's all produced in one part. It doesn't fail in field anymore. Um, and it's made at a fraction of the cost. Volumes, uh, you know, tens to twenties a month, that kind of size. Mm -hmm. Uh, many CNC engineers we go and visit all say the same thing. We're busy, we're subcontract machinists, we'd love our OEM product, we'd love to make bicycle parts or part for motorsport. This is a great way in, isn't it? You, you haven't got the boundaries of design. Yeah, complexities for free and things that are impossible to manufacture traditionally. Oh, you don't need all the tooling, the specialist equipment. Essentially, if you can design it, with a few tips and tricks, you can print it. So for example, the Gurin's milling cutters here, for part of their specialist range, completely bespoke to the customer, highly customized. Basically we've got through tool coolant, um, all kinds of bespoke profiles. Uh, you can print that overnight, sinter it the following day, they'll finish machine it and away they go. So Danny, it's important to point out these are actual real life parts in production today, potentially. They're not demo demonstration parts. No, exactly. Uh, elements like this copper part here, a heat sink. Obviously, we can scale it and make it as complex as you like. Buzz bars is a big element for us. Pure copper is the latest material to be released on the Metal X. And there's a huge uptake in things like lightweighting, end of arm, mm -hmm. welding tooling on automotive production lines, things like that. And copper is expensive. We haven't got waste here. No swarf at all. Obviously, we just print what we need where we need it. Here we are. And the main barrier to entry, correct me if wrong, with metal technology in the past it has been cost. Quite a high barrier to entry potentially, whereas I know now with this technology it's not as expensive as you may think. No, that's it. Typically a third or a quarter of the cost of what you may consider a powder bed machine of the same kind of size. So yeah, a lot more affordable than it was two or three years ago. Thanks Danny. So for people watching at home, interested in 3D printing, additive manufacturing of metals, um, they want to learn more, they need educating potentially. How, how do they do so? How do they find out more? Yeah, just reach out to Mark 3D. We can either take you to our showroom or to one of our customers and get you a sample part knocked up for some testing. I might come myself. <laughs> Thanks, Danny, and thank you for watching.